There are a few key things that I have come to realize are critical in order for me to see my own progress in myself. And they're not unique to me. I see them in my clients. I see them in my friends. I see them in my sister. I see them in my mom. We all, when we want to change, we need a clear strategy and a plan that we can trust. We need to have someone there to support us and give us clarity when we're confused, someone to ask questions to. We need to have other people to do things with. That's a powerful aspect of women is that when we are with other women, we often have more confidence to keep going, especially when they're encouraging each other. And in perimenopause, the other thing I know without a doubt is that we have been highly uneducated on the rhythms of our body and how they are different than men's. And really, that's what this podcast is all about. Before we dive into this week's episode, I want to invite you into the perimenopause posse to join me and dozens of other women who are healing their hormones and feeling their best in perimenopause with energy, with better sleep, with weight release. Because of the the strategy that is in there because of the weekly live coaching that I'm able to answer your questions and be more specific to you because of the support of the other women in there. And each month I offer a unique challenge to educate you more on what's happening in your body so that you don't have to feel so out to lunch that I know was the exact feeling I had at 37 when all of this just hit me out of nowhere. In June, I am sharing a cycle syncing challenge with you so you can better understand how to work with your female hormone rhythm, whether you're bleeding or not. It's a seven day challenge that's gonna educate you on that. You also get the P4 formula, you get hundreds of bonus trainings, you get live coaching with me, and you get the support of this incredible group. And these are the reasons that this community, this posse, is making waves in so many women's lives. So grab the link and swipe up here, click the link for the perimenopause posse, and come and join in and stop struggling with where you're at in your perimenopause. It's time for us to step up, to have the confidence in ourselves and our bodies in this time in midlife. And guess what? It's only $37 a month. All right, hope to see you in there. Let's dive into this week's episode. What's up, sisters? Welcome to the Period Whisperer podcast. I'm Bria. I'm your host. If you're new, I'm so happy you are here. I'm your perimenopause and menopause sister, your holistic trainer, hormone specialist, translator of your female body. I'm a recovering people pleaser and hustle addict turned body whisperer and hormone decoder. And I am here to help you de-stress your body, decode what it is saying, become the CEO of it, and own your own health, energy, and weight loss again. This show is for you, the overwhelmed, overworked, underappreciated step woman who dreams of a body they feel strong, energetic, and sane in. The woman who knows that she shouldn't just wave the white aging flag and believes in a body and life of peace, love, and purpose. But you don't just know how to get there yet. So if you are stuck in your body, your energy, your life, you are in the right spot. Let's lean in and learn what our bodies are saying to us. What's up, sisters? Bria here, your host of the Period Whisperer podcast, which thanks to you guys is now a top 2.5% podcast in the wellness industry in the entire world. And why that makes me so excited is because it means this message is getting out further, normalizing what perimenopause is, helping us understand our bodies more. Because when we understand what's actually happening inside of us, we can find the correct course of action to feel better, right? To work with our bodies. And that's so much about what this podcast is really all about. And the first step, of course, to any healing is knowing, is knowing more and and shedding more light on this phase of our life. So whether you're brand new and someone maybe shared this to you or you just found it because you're starting to struggle or you know you don't feel right and you believe you should feel better, I'm so glad you're here. And I want to ask you, 
How do you feel in your body today? How does your body actually feel? Not how you're frustrated about how it feels, but what's what's bugging you in there? And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something that I found so powerful to understand that made a lot of sense. We talk so much in in this in yeah, in this podcast about really how the shifting of the baton from our ovaries to our adrenals, you know, creates a real stress on the body, right? And the stress in the body. But there's a real thing that's happening in our brain as well that coincides at the same time. And this is why I, you know, this is why I created the perimenopause posse. So if you're not in there already, come in. It is an, a beautiful community of women where you're doing this with them. You're going through it with them. You're educating. You have the, the P4 formula specifically, which is designed strategically to help you both with the physical, the body part, and also with the brain part, which, you know, I guess is physical as well, right? It's a physical reaction, what's happening in there. So let's get into it. But First, I want to share with you something, a mistake I was constantly making, Um, whether it was in my 20s or my 30s or, you know, as I kind of got smacked in the face with this perimenopause piece, I was constantly trying to grow to be better, to, you know, without really changing. I knew I wanted to feel better, but no matter how hard I tried, it felt like I was trying to climb a tree with weights attached at my ankles. And then, you know, when I started thinking about this, I remembered this quote from Doogie Howser. Did you ever watch Doogie Howser when you were younger? He always sat at the end and typed, you know, on that old square computer with the, with the little like cursor and, le- and letters that popped up one at a time with like a journal entry. But he said this thing that stuck with me as, as a teen, which was, you can't hold on to the past and still ride off into the future. When we keep running into the same challenges in our life, whether it's in our body or in our, you know, in our experience or with our friends or in our relationship, when we keep running into the same challenge over and over again, it means you have to heal some old baggage and let that shit go first. Wouldn't it be so much easier to climb that tree without the 50 pound ankle weights on? Think about it. We want to feel better in our body. We want to sleep better, look better, have more energy, right? What are the most common things that are keeping us from achieving those things, right? From making the changes in our nutrition, from making the changes in our sleep, from making basic movement a healthy habit, from from accepting help and enjoying pleasure. What are the key things? Alcohol food, drugs, obsessive habits, hustle addiction, stress, right? These are the things that keep us inflamed, that keep us stuck, that we use to kind of comfort and numb ourselves. We hold on to these things, right? Like the stress that's keeping us awake at night. We hold on to these things like our life depends on it. But we never really ask ourselves why. Seriously, I have said before, I'm like, I have actually said before, I'm never giving up alcohol. I'm never giving up chocolate. You know, you know, I, I, I don't want to sleep in because I'm a huge morning person. And I've heard you guys say these things as well. But let's be real here. Not doing something, right? Not obsessing over something, not doing more and adding to your plate, not you know, reaching for a food that we know isn't going to, you know, serve us really shouldn't be that hard. If you're making it that hard, maybe there's something more to the picture, right? If you constantly have a cut that's bleeding and bleeding and bleeding, we need to understand why the, why we keep cutting ourselves, why we keep picking that scab, right? And there always is something more to it. You are resisting letting go of that baggage because you don't know who you are without it. For me, it's like, who would I be if I wasn't the nice girl, the positive girl, the one that's so helpful and keeps it all together and never ruffles feathers? And an even bigger picture of where I know I struggled with my identity was, what would I be worth if I wasn't doing all of these things for other people, if I wasn't just 
holding my own shit all together all the time. You know, what would my worth even be? Who am I? It's scary, but it's the truth and the truth shall set you free as we know. And this, this is the gift of perimenopause because things are actually changing in our brain to know that we are no longer able to be tolerant to the decisions and the way we've been managing the things in our life, right? We we know that all women go through perimenopause in life just like all t- people go through puberty. All of us go through this hormonal shift. Even, you know, even if you have a hysterectomy and everything just gets removed. There's there's a significant shifting of that hormone before you even settle into that transition and are actually what we call postmenopausal, right? So it doesn't matter where you what you've gone through, where you're at. Every woman goes through perimenopause, and yet 73% of us suffer so much and never get help because we don't understand what's really going on. In fact, half of women report not even knowing what perimenopause is, right? So we can see the big gap here that we're not, we don't understand what's going on. And so we we know through, you know through this podcast or maybe other research you've been doing, we know that the body is super sensitive to stress, right? Because the, the ovaries are passing that baton to the adrenals, our adrenals are kind of our stress managers, right? We're already full over there. And any amount of stress, whether it's from the environment or, or emotional or mental or, you know, relationship or kids or food or movement, any amount of stress is suppressing our progesterone more, throwing off our hormones even further, keeping us in fat storage mode and sucking our batteries dry every single day. So we know this is happening in one aspect of our actual body. But there are certain areas of the brain, such as the amygdala and the hippocampus, that are really important for encoding and retrieving memories. And they're really rich in estrogen and progesterone Really, these these two hormones I talk about all the time that fluctuate the most during perimenopause. This is why menopausal hormonal changes bring women, you know, make us less tolerant and more frustrated. This is actually a time where we become more conscious to things that have frustrated us. You know, we're finally able to stop suppressing things because we're just that shifting in our brain because of these hormones is making us finally be like, ugh, I can't deal with this anymore. I don't know why I was able to ignore these things or say it's okay when it's not okay or just act like a different version of myself. I don't know why I was able to put up with these behaviors, but now I am no longer able because of the shifting of the hormonal impact on our actual brain. So we have the body sensitivity to stress and now we have the brain's hormonal sensitivity and how much you're struggling in perimenopause has to do with the lifestyle choices and the things that have happened in your life and how you've managed them up until this point. And here we are. Some women don't have too many troubles with it. Yeah, we're all going to have some shift, you know, some response to the shifting of hormones. But some women really struggle with, you know, with these massive symptoms in their body or anxiety and depression or really feeling like something is not right. And that has everything to do with, again, the habits we've kept up until now and, you know, both physically in our life and also emotionally how we've dealt with things, right? This is why for me, I was had to finally take a look at everything in the in my life and say, I have been unhappy for so long. I've been suppressing my frustration. I've been pretending to be someone else for so long. It's not working, right? These shifts in our brain are bring, can often kind of bring back memories of hurts and losses that we've managed to forget or completely minimize. And that's why perimenopause is really this kind of perfect opportunity to clean up unfinished business from our past, to stop living out of alignment with who we are. Now, that can feel really uncomfortable. As this shift happens, we really find ourselves in that position where we can't go back to who we were because our body and our brain is no longer tolerant of that. But the way forward can seem really hard. And this is why 
finding, you know, the strategy, using a strategy like the P4 formula, doing it with friends can make it easier. The, the third P in, in the P4 formula is really all about perspective. It's understanding how long it should take for us to get results and the perspective around how we are treating our body in that journey. It's the perspective around how we should feel. And it's looking at that mountain ahead of us and saying, this is going to suck or this is going to suck and it's going to be awesome. There's a lot of awesomeness at the top. There's a lot of awesomeness from that view. There's a lot of awesomeness in the connections I get to make along the journey. This is why now is the time where you're building that body and that life 10 years from now where you don't want to stay exactly where you are because your body and your brain are not going to let it happen. It's just going to keep making you uncomfortable, making you frustrated until you either just sink in it and lose yourself or decide to do the hard work to change whatever that looks like for you. How this ultimately affects you, right, the shifting in these really depends to a large degree on how willing you are to make the changes you are being urged to make. If you're listening to this podcast, if you're hearing my words, if you know you're having all these symptoms of, of you know, shifting hormones like depression, anxiety, you know, gut health issues, bloating, irregular periods, heavy periods, moodiness, weight gain, if you're having all of these things, night sweats and hot flashes, and it's so bad that it's really impacting your ability to thrive in life, that's your answer. You can change or you cannot change, but you won't get to stay the same. Your brain is now making it more uncomfortable to stay right where you are because you've outgrown it. This is the time. Now is that time, right? If you're an emotional eater, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to continue to emotionally eat if you don't address that right now, right? And at some point, you can't out eat your emotions. If you are someone who is a stress ball, you know, at some point that stress is going to make you sick if you don't learn how to manage that properly. If you are someone who's a bit of a hustle addict who just does more and does more and does more to make yourself feel better, make yourself feel worthy, make yourself forget the things that are making you unhappy. At one point, you're going to run out of energy and space to be able to do that and you will start to break down. If you're someone who uses exercise to make yourself feel better, but it's hurting your body, like your joints are hurting, your cortisol is through the roof, you're gaining weight even though you're exercising, you need to find a better way. Now is the time. Sisters, this episode is really about awareness, awareness of what is real for you now. Remember that the work is not working out or meal planning. Oh, no, <laughs> that stuff is not work. We make it harder than it needs to be in our heads. But come on, getting up and going for a 30 minute walk, eating three meals a day with some vegetables and protein first. That is not work. That's basic foundational health that we really should have been taught and encouraged to master early on. We weren't. Nothing we can do about it now except make the change. The work is the processing, accepting, and letting go of the stuff that makes these simple things harder. Yes, genetics play a role, but if every day you can't say no to sugar, if every day you can't sleep, if every day you can't make time to just move your body, that is all you, sister. Your brain, your brain is over it. And your body is over it. And now is your opportunity to say, okay, I'm going to change. And how do we change? We change with a strategy like being the CEO of our body, the strategy like the P4 formula, where we give ourselves permission finally and surrender to the permission to put ourselves first, where we stop making the choices in our life that create inflammation and start making the choices in our life to reduce that inflammation, where we address the things that are underneath that, where we decide to have our perspective be like, I'm going to live the next 40 whatever years of my life feeling the way I deserve to feel right? And yeah, there's going to be hard things, but I'd rather do hard things and then feel flipping amazing than do things that make me feel like everything is hard, right? 
And of course, we bring presence to the body in the P4 formula. We bring it back to this place of like, how do I feel? How do I feel when I'm around these people? How do I feel right now in this moment? What is serving me and what is not? It's simpler than we think. What makes it hard are the things we haven't dealt with or the fact that we haven't surrendered to this beautiful stage in our life, which isn't going anywhere. (laughs) We want to do it. And remember, just like going through puberty or pregnancy or hard moments in our life is hard. It's all made better and easier when you connect with other women who get you, who are going through it too. I've always been a girl's girl my whole life and everything that has always got me through hard times are my friends, are the people that I love, you know, my close, my close inner circle. Maybe they're family, maybe they're friends, Maybe they're partners, but either way, they're the ones that we want to go through this together with. (coughs) Excuse me. So, sisters, you now know what's going on in your body, what's going on in your brain. It's not going to let you stay the same anymore. So what are you going to do? Swipe up on this podcast. Join us in the Perimenopause Posse. This month, I'm teaching you how to actually sync with your cycle. So whether you have a cycle still, whether you're bleeding or not, I'm going to teach you, excuse me, (coughs) I'm going to teach you how to work out with it, move with it, live with it, build your life around it eat with it, thrive in it, have sex in it, you know, so that it is the best that you can do. Come and join us in. Check out what it's all about. Be a part of this movement of women who are empowering themselves to feel better than they ever have so that they can teach the people around them how to feel that way too. You don't have to stay where you are. And in fact, you won't. It's time to go out and be more in your life and not just less on a scale. Do me one big favor, sister. Send me a message that you listen to this. Take a snapshot of it and share it in your social media. Send it to a friend who needs it. Write a review. Let's get this message out to more women to know that they can feel better now than they ever have before. And it's all within reach. And it's the work you want to do. All right, sisters. Catch you next time. Thank you so much for joining me on the Period Whisperer podcast. I want to encourage you to reach out to me directly and message me if there are topics or things you're struggling with so we can address those right where you are at. And of course, if you loved this episode, if you learned something, make sure to share it with your friends and please rate and review it wherever you get your podcasts.